Good morning, bonjour, bon dia, buenos dias. Welcome to 2022. Today I'm going to look at decoding um, VHF airband AM. And uh, right now I'm just out on my balcony. My balcony has been sealed off for the past four months due to construction. So it was opened up one day before Christmas, which is wonderful. So the first thing I did was put out my antenna. So I've got my um, marine antenna there. The uh, whip on the antenna is about one meter long, so that means uh, it's one wavelength at 300 megahertz. So at around 150 megahertz, which is somewhere between the air and the marine bands, it's about half wavelength. So it should be okay for the uh, air band. So it's got a, a RJ58 type of cable on it, which is a 50 ohm cable. Let's go in and look at the connection. So here's the setup here. I'm using a RTL version one. It has an MCX connector, which is quite a small little connector. The uh, VHF antenna has a PL259 UHF connector. So I have to have an adapter to go from that to SMA, and then an, ad an adapter from SMA to the uh, MCX. So that's how I get into the version one. Um, there's the there's the GNU radio schematic, which is running at the moment. Um, I've set it up for 132.8 uh, default value. That's the local uh, ATC, but I noticed today there's not too much traffic on that frequency, so I changed it to 132.475. And that's the frequency display. I've got the uh, hold on. Let's just reset that. And let's wait and see if we can hear something. So that's a 132.8. Yeah, we're getting the ATC uh, arrivals there. Heading two three zero ten three thousand seven hundred six one. Sure enough, more greater turn forward. Right to a three zero cut down, that's your five for the one. Eighty seven, and uh, do you want to speed up until the uh, coup boom for the nine six one two? Right heading three three zero to send a three thousand or sixteen seventy one. Okay, so we're looking at the GNU radio schematic. And uh, let's look at the first block here. In the options block, what you want to make uh, make sure you do is give your um, schematic a, a name, and I'm calling it RTL underscore RX Air AM GRC. So put that in there and give it a title. Uh, if you pick, let's say I put a dash in there originally, and that's a mistake. You have to use underscores. If you make a mistake, the options will appear in red, which, you know, in any of these boxes, if you see the title as red, this will also show up as red. So it, it means that you've got some sort of a, a small error in there and you can go into the block. It usually gives you a help uh, message here telling you what you've done wrong. Uh, I'm using for the RTL source, this is the block that interfaces with the RTL. If you go in here, I've just taken the default block, but I've, I put in a variable here called frequency so I can vary um, the AM uh, airband frequency uh, I've got it set up for a default, here's the variable here, the QT GUI range variable, and I've got it set up as a default of 132.8, but it goes from, let's say, 130 to 134. You can change that uh, as you wish. You also have to put in the PPM. This is the error of your RTL. Now, in this experiment, I'm using the version 1. The version 1 had an error of somewhere, mine was around somewhere from 20 to 27, depending on the temperature, etc. You have to check it all the time. Uh, the later versions I find are very accurate, so they're either zero or just one. Anyways, you've got to put your PPM in there. And then the other thing is I created another variable for the RF gain. Um, so this lets me go, let's say, from zero all the way up to 40. You don't want to put any more gain in than necessary, because that tends to um, cause overmodulation and spurious components to come in. So just crank in what you need and no more. So the RTL is tuned to... Um, uh, the frequency that you want. The 132.8 in Toronto here is the uh, local uh, 
International Airport. I think it's the ATC arrivals frequency. Um, so the, the packets, or the, sorry, the samples, the samples coming out of the RTL uh, are at 2.4 megacycles per second, and I'm low-pass filtering them for an AM bandwidth. I'm very conservative here. I'm allowing a, a bandwidth of, let's say, uh, 10K uh, and a transmission, transmission, transition width of 5K, so it's a very uh, relaxed filter. Um, I've got an audio sync block here, and that's uh, so that the output goes into my laptop audio. It's the, the audio on my laptop works at 48 kilohertz. So I've got to get down from 2.4 megasamples per second to 48 kilosamples per second. So in the low-pass filter, I've got decimation of 10. So I'm taking one, one, one out of every 10 samples here. And then I've got to get from 240K to 48K. So I got to use a rational resampler. So that takes one out of five. So one-fifth of 20, 240K is 48K. Now in a previous post, I looked at the theory of AM. If you had just an I and a Q, then you would have your baseband signal multiplied by the phase difference between your local oscillator and the um, <clears throat> actual um, received carrier. But if you have I and Q samples, you can square them, take the square root, and just get the magnitude and get rid of that phase angle. So that's handy. So that's my AM demodular, simply one block. To look for these modules, there um, or these blocks are all located over here. Uh, on the right-hand side of GNU Radio, and all you have to do is use the search um, search menu here to find them. Okay, so let's uh, let's operate the schematic and see what happens. If there are any errors, this will, will show up red. You hit this little guy here to compile it, and then you run it. Okay, so there's the frequency display. Uh, I'm going to show the actual frequencies here. With the QT GUI sync, it's quite handy because it's got a frequency display, a waterfall, and a time domain, and a constellation. So it's got like four instruments all built into one. If you use separate instruments, the problem with that is they all get tiled one on top of the other, so you don't get a very big display. <clears throat> That's what I like about the QT uh, GUI sync. Here you can uh, change the frequency, and up here you can adjust the gain. If you go up to the full gain, Notice you get all these intermod spuries occurring. There was a signal there. Let me go back to 30. So I'll just monitor for a little bit. Let's look at the waterfall. There's the waterfall. You can adjust the color down here. And there's the time domain display. With your mouse, you can increase or decrease the amplitude. And down here with the FFT size, you can uh, increase this time if you want. Like, for instance, if I went up to uh, 32,000 samples, then you're up in the millisecond range. So that's quite versatile there. Okay, so that's just a run through of the block diagram. Um, in the um, first part of the video, I've got some actual captures of the uh, 